In addition, IMP has revised its timetable, its uh, schedule for 2021 very recently. And so we will be discussing is the latest one. So what does the immunization schedule say? So instead of showing you the table, I will be writing it down. So it will be easy for me to, you know, tell you in detail about the differences which are there. First of all, when you talk about at birth, in case of national immunization schedule, we are giving BCG, zero dose of OPV, zero dose of hepatitis B. Here we don't use the term zero dose. First of all, BCG will be given just like national immunization schedule. You will give OPV. We don't call it as zero dose for the simple reason that only OPV single dose is given at birth and subsequent doses of OPV are not a part of IEP schedule. So this is something that you must remember that OPV is given in this schedule only at birth and not afterwards. And then you have hepatitis B. Instead of calling it as hepatitis B zero dose, IAP schedule calls it as hepatitis B one dose. Just the nomenclature is different. A national schedule calls it as zero dose. This schedule calls it as one dose. It is also written as BD that is birth dose. Right. Then we have next immunization, next, next vaccine occurring at about six weeks. You will have pentavalent by itself is not a vaccine which is given. There are vaccines which are now at six weeks, the vaccines which are to be given according to IAP schedule, you first have DPT. Now DPT can be either whole cell or a cellular form. Either of the two can be used as a part of a DPT vaccine. The whole cell one will be written as D, T, W, T and a cellular one is written as D, T, A, P. This is the way it is written in the standard guidelines. Then you will be giving DPT-1 that is the first dose of DPT either whole cell or a cellular. You will be giving the first dose of IPV. Please remember that it is not fractionated IPV. It is the proper IPV which is given. Fractionated IPV was 0.1 ml. This is 0.5 ml which is given. Then you will have hepatitis B second dose, hepatitis B2. You will have hip dose, haemophilus influenza type B one dose. And then you will have rotavirus vaccine, single dose. Finally, you will have PCV first one that is first dose. Now, what are the differences here? As you can well see, the DPT-1, IPV-1, Hepatitis B2, they all are mentioned separately. In practice, what IAP schedule says is that you can use either all of them singularly, which is practically not possible because the number of vaccines will be very high. In practice, what you find is that there are hexavalent vaccines which are available. These hexavalent vaccines are costly, but they are, you know, easier to administer for the simple reason that they usually contain DPT along with IPV, along with hepatitis B, along with Hib. So you have all the six vaccines, still six diseases being covered inside the hexavalent vaccine itself. And then in addition, you give rotavirus 1 and PCV1. According to IAP schedule, you can use either PCV10 or you can use PCV13. In national immunization schedule, only PCV13 is recommended. In IAP schedule, you can use either PCV10 or PCV13. If you choose one vaccine, one suppose you choose PCV10, then the subsequent doses also preferably should be PCV10 only. If you choose PCV13, it should be preferably PCV13. There are significant cost differences in the private sector and that is why options are given in the IAP schedule. Now, IAP schedule very clearly says that IPV has to be given. Now, what you will find is myself being a private practitioner, I often face this dilemma. Now, the common brands of hexavalent vaccines which are available, they range anywhere from 3000 to 5000 depending upon the price of the brand that you are using. So, when you counsel the parents and you say you will have to shell out 5000 rupees only for one hexavalent and it needs to be repeated at 6, 10, 14 weeks then the parents might not be that willing. If you try to use DPT alone, hepatitis B alone, Hib alone, there are two problems with that. Number one, the number of doses of vaccine is going to increase. And secondly, 
you will find that IPV alone is not easily available in the market. Its supply is very erratic. IAP schedule knows that and that is why it says clearly that most of the vaccines which are available, they are hexavalent vaccines. So if the parents can afford, you can go in for hexavalent vaccine. But in case the parents are unable to afford or if you find that IPV alone is not separately available when you are using individual vaccine, these children should be referred to the nearest government dispensary or healthcare center where child will get pentavalent, fractional IPV and after 6, 10, 14 weeks is completed, then the remaining schedule can be covered in the private sector. What is important is the IPV has to be given. Either fractionated one which you give as a part of a national immunization schedule with OPV or IPV full on alone without fractionation where OPV is not required but it has to be a part of the national immunization schedule. So these are the points that I wanted to emphasize and that is why I am discussing it uh, in details here. So these are the practical problems that you find and that is why the immunization schedule slightly differs. Somebody once asked me sir why don't we give pentavalent in IAP schedule? Simple reason pentavalent is not available in the private sector. It is only available through government channels and that is why pentavalent is not a part of IAP schedule. Right? So IAP schedule gives you an option that is why it says you can use hexavalent form where vaccines are combined or you can use individual ones if all of them are available. So six weeks, these are the vaccines that you will be using. Another major change, PCV, you can use either 10 or 13 villain form. Now what happens at 10 weeks? Similar uh, schedule is followed. So 10 weeks, you will be giving to the child DPT2. It can be whole cell or it can be a cellular. You will be using IPV2. You will be using Hib2. You will be giving Hepatitis B3 because one was at zero at birth. It, there was no zero dose. So at birth it was one, six weeks it was two and ten weeks it is three. And then you will use rotavirus vaccine second dose and you will use PCV vaccine second dose. Coming to 14 weeks, you will have again a very similar uh, schedule here. DPT3, IPV3, Hib3, Hepatitis B4, right? So total four doses as a part of primary vaccination. Rotavirus 3 and PCV 3. So birth 6 week, 10 week, 14 week. 6, 10, 14 very similar to each other. Then we have before we go to 9 months we have additional vaccines coming up here. In IAP schedule you will have vaccines been given at 6 months and at 7 months. At 6 month you will give inactivated influenza vaccine so flu vaccine will come here, Inf activated influenza vaccine, IIV first dose and 7 months that is 4 weeks later, 1 month later you will give the second dose of inactivated influenza vaccine 2. So IIV 1, oral influenza vaccines are not recommended for use, the live attenuated influenza vaccines are not approved for use. Only inactivated injectable vaccines of influenza are recommended. IIV1, in a child aged less than one year, two doses need to be given with, week, with a gap of about one month between them. So four weeks apart, two doses need to be given and these will be continued yearly till five years of age. Right after that, only high risk group children need influenza vaccine. So according to IP schedule, six months IIV1, seven months IIV2. Then we have six to nine months. Six to nine months, you have the vaccine called as typhoid conjugate vaccine. Typhoid conjugate vaccine, single dose is given, which provides lifelong protection, no booster needed. So in short, it is written as TCV. Six to nine months, TCV will be given. Then at nine months of age, you will administer in, I, in national immunization schedule, we give MR1 and we give vitamin A. Here you will be using MMR1. Why not MR? Because MR alone or measles alone is not available in private sector. What you get is only MMR as a combination. So MMR1 will be given here. The IAP schedule talks about only MMR1 and it does not talk about vitamin A at 9 months. So we will not write it here. Then you have 12 months that is one year of age, 
at 12 months you will be using hepatitis A vaccine. Hepatitis A vaccine is not a part of national immunization schedule but it is given in the IAP schedule to all children. So 12 months you will give hepatitis A vaccine. Then you will have uh, the next vaccination coming at 15 months. At 15 months that is 6 months after MMR1 you will give the second dose of MMR what you call as MMR2. Plus you will have chicken pox vaccine coming here. Varicella 1 will be given at 15 months. In addition, PCV booster will also be given at 15 months, right? Then you have 16 to 18 months. 16 to 18 months, you will be using the DPT booster. It can be whole cell or a cellular. So, it will be DPT booster 1 that you will be giving here. You will be using IPV booster 1 here and you will be using hip booster 1 here. The hepatitis B as well as rotavirus boosters are not recommended so they will not be coming up here. And then you have 18 to 19 months, one month later. This is the time during which you will give varicella second dose as well as hepatitis A second dose and you will put a underline it and put a star here. Why am I putting a star here? The reason for this is very clear. So, 18 to 19 months, first you write down varicella 2 and hepatitis A second dose. In case of hepatitis, there are two types of vaccines which are available. One is a live attenuated vaccine and second is a killed vaccine, inactivated vaccine. In case you are using a live attenuated vaccine, only single dose at 12 months is good enough. You don't need to give hepatitis A afterwards. In case you are using hepatitis A killed vaccine, then you will be giving the second dose at 18 to 19 months. There are basically in India two brands of hepatitis A which are available. One is called as BioVac A. BioVac A is the oral attenuated form and we give only single dose at 12 months. Lifelong it is not required. Whereas the second form is the inactivated form which is available and that injectable form of inactivated form vaccine you need to give first dose at 12 months and second dose if you have given the inactivated form that will come at 18 to 19 months, right? So after that you have the next vaccination coming at 4 to 6 years. At 4 to 6 years you will have the boosters coming up, you will have DPT booster second, you will have IPV booster second and you will have MMR3 which comes up at 4 to 6 years and then you have 10 to 12 years. At 10 to 12 years you will be using Tdap. Tdap is not a part of national immunization schedule. There you are using only TD. Here you are using Tdap, the acellular uh, slightly reduced form of diphtheria. Plus, you will uh, of diphtheria toxoid and a cellular vaccine is the one that you use. We call it as Tdap. Plus, you will be using IAP schedule recommends HPV vaccine. When you are using HPV vaccine, if age of the child is between 9 to 15 years, two doses are given six months apart. And if the age of the patient is more than 15 years, that is 16 years and above, then you will be using three doses. Two types of regimes are available, 0, 1 and 6 months and second is 0, 2 and 6 months based upon the type of vaccine the, you are using. Whether you are using Gardasil or you are using Cervarix, the bivalent or quadrivalent form, two types of regimes are available. More about it we will discuss uh, in the end as a summary form. So, these are the, this is the IAP immunization schedule which looks to be similar but has certain important differences certain more vaccines compared to national immunization schedule and it contains the proper IPV not the fractionated IPV. There is only a OPV given at birth, subsequent doses of OPV are not recommended. It contains hepatitis A, typhoid conjugate vaccine, varicella vaccine and it includes your various MMR vaccine instead of MR vaccine. And whenever you start with the influenza vaccine, please remember that influenza vaccine in the first year of life you give two doses four weeks apart. One was given at six months, second was given at seven months. After that, from second to fifth year, you will give annual doses. 
annual doses means once per year. So one dose every at a gap of one year, preferably before the beginning of rainy season in India. And beyond fifth year, they are used only in patients who are having high risk population. Only high risk groups need to be given, the influenza needs to be given above five years of age. So this is what the IAP latest immunization schedule is.